The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. And good morning here at 5 a.m. Thanks for waking up with us. I'm Maddie Jansen alongside Alex Fisher. The time now is 5.02 and it is expected to be another busy week for local health officials as COVID continues to reign in our community. But there is some good news as we can officially say a majority of people here in Kern County have been fully vaccinated. It is a milestone, albeit a small victory. So let's look at how this pandemic is affecting the vaccinated versus the unvaccinated. And while we have half the population fully vaxxed, we still have hundreds of thousands with no protection. And despite the numerous treatments we have in the hospital setting, health officials keep saying the shots are the best protection we have and the raw data proves that. So right now, 70% of people getting sick with the virus is someone who is not vaccinated. And 90% of people who are in the hospital currently have or currently are not vaccinated. It is even better for the 150,000 people who have received a booster shot. Now, out of the 1,974 lives lost to the virus, only 50 were fully vaccinated. That is only 2.5% of the deaths. And out of the total number of deaths, we know of at least 600 unvaccinated people who died from the virus when vaccines were widely available. That means nearly a third of our county's deaths could have been prevented. And if you do want to get vaccinated against COVID-19, there is still time. And just a reminder that Kern Public Health continues to hold pop up clinics at Heritage Park in East Bakersfield. Pfizer and J&J vaccines will be available. The clinic also provides free coronavirus testing. Today's event is from 8 a.m. until noon. No appointments are necessary, so that means you can just show up. Hundreds descended upon Washington, D.C.'s National Mall yesterday for a rally against COVID-19 mandates. The Defeat the Mandates rally was largely organized on Facebook and some extremist Internet forums. Most of those attending are people who oppose vaccine mandates or vaccines for kids and other pandemic requirements and restrictions. Musical performances and speeches, including remarks from anti-vaccine activist Robert F. Kennedy Jr. were part of the rally. Law enforcement officials say they beefed up security for the large-scale protest. In your 17 core watch this morning, we could soon learn the fate of convicted murderer Jamie Osuna with the judge scheduled to rule on his competency later today. Osuna has been serving a life prison term without parole for the torture and killing of Yvette Pena in Bakersfield. He pleaded guilty in 2017 to first degree murder and other charges filed in Pena's killing. Osuna was also accused of decapitating his cellmate in 2019. Today, a judge is scheduled to determine whether Osuna is competent to stand trial in the 2019 case. We'll bring you the latest on today's hearing tonight on 17 News at 5. And we took a deep dive into Osuna's life and the lives of his victims in our award-winning podcast, The Man with a Thousand Faces. You can listen to it on Apple, Spotify, and other sites. Just go to thousandfacespodcast.com for more information. 5.05 is your time now. A 73-year-old Bakersfield man appeared in court Friday accused of attempting to murder his ex-girlfriend. It happened last Monday in the 500 at block of West Columbus Street near the 7-Eleven in central Bakersfield. Police say Martin Williams is believed to have shot his ex-girlfriend multiple times with a gun before fleeing the scene. The woman was rushed to a hospital where she was described as stable. Williams entered a plea of not guilty to the charges filed against him. In your 17 Crime Watch this morning, the CHP says it seized 90 pounds of marijuana near its headquarters in Buttonwillow. The exact area? Stockdale Highway and Stoner Drive. CHP says an officer noticed what looked like a street race just after 1230 Saturday afternoon. After officers pulled over one of the drivers, CHP says the car quite literally smelled suspicious, finding bags upon bags of marijuana. A man in his 30s was cited and released for marijuana possession, expired registration, and vehicle violations. The identity of the driver has not been released. New developments overnight. The State Department is now urging Americans to get out of Ukraine and not to travel to Russia. NBC's Bree Jackson is in Washington this morning with the latest. Good morning, Maddie. Alex, the State Department is ordering the evacuation of embassy family members in Ukraine, citing reports that Russia is planning significant military action. 
uh, to de-escalate tensions. Strong words from U.S. officials as tensions with Russia escalate. The U.S. Secretary of State warning if any Russian troops enter Ukraine. In the event that there is a renewed Russian uh, incursion, Russian forces going into Ukraine, uh, there is going to be a swift, a severe and united response. This comes as Russian forces amass along Ukraine's northern, southern and eastern borders. I am gravely concerned that Putin will show once again aggression in Europe and cross the boundary into Ukraine in the coming days or weeks. Sparking calls from abroad and at home for President Biden to act fast and aggressively. Let's make sure that we are pushing back right now with stiff sanctions, making sure that uh, we are showing Putin we do mean business. The Biden administration Administration already sending the first shipment of military aid while weighing options. Among them is to move U.S. troops and equipment from other parts of Europe into Poland, Romania, and other countries neighboring Ukraine. Blinken stressing diplomacy as the preferred path forward. It could enhance mutual security on a reciprocal basis. Uh, so, look, that is clearly the preferable path forward for everyone. And you President Biden not ruling out another summit with Russian President Vladimir Putin. The State Department also saying that non-essential embassy staff have the option to leave and warning Americans not to travel to Ukraine or Russia. In Washington, I'm Bree Jackson, 17 News. Making headlines around the nation, a Texas man's in custody this morning, charged with trying to get people to shoot and kill election officials in Georgia. And the Justice Department says it's investigating hundreds of similar threats. On the day Georgia was holding a hotly contested special election last year to fill two vacant seats in the U.S. Senate, the FBI says a message popped up on Craigslist offering $10,000 to kill election officials in the state. According to court documents, it said it's our duty as American patriots to put an end to the lives of these traitors. It used the word exterminate and advocated a specific act of violence that it said, quote, can send a very clear message. Federal prosecutors Friday charged a man from Austin, Texas, Chad Christopher Stark, with the federal crime of sending an interstate threat. The attorney general says cases like this are a priority. There is no First Amendment right to unlawfully threaten to harm or kill someone. Justice Department officials say a task force set up last year to look at cases like this have, has received more than 850 reports of threats to election workers nationwide. Leaders of Arizona's Democratic Party have voted to censure Democratic Senator Kirsten Sinema for helping block a voting rights bill. They say the bill was needed to protect democracy. The censure is only symbolic and has no practical consequences. Sinema's spokesperson says the senator always promised she would be an independent voice for Arizona. On the 49th anniversary of the landmark decision, uh, Roe v. Wade, President Joe Biden on Saturday tweeted that Roe v. Wade is under attack like never before and pledged to defend it. Biden said in a tweet, the constitutional right established in Roe is under assault as never before. The ruling affirmed the right to abortion to every woman in every state. The U.S. Supreme Court is currently considering a Mississippi law, which if upheld, would allow states to further restrict access to abortion services. And other states, such as Texas, have passed or introduced legislation that effectively bans abortions after six weeks. Biden went on to say we must recommit to strengthening access to reproductive care and protecting the freedom of all people to build their own future. Former Vice President Mike Pence, meantime, says he believes the Supreme Court will overturn Roe v. Wade later this year. Pence made the comments on Saturday at the annual National Pro-Life Summit in Washington, D.C. Pence also told the anti-abortion activists he believes the next battleground over abortion will be in state legislatures. We are asking the court in no uncertain terms to make history. We are asking the Supreme Court of the United States to overturn Roe v. Wade and restore the sanctity of life to the center of American law. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.